Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, uh, of course, of Ohio, she's the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, uh, sent out this tweet earlier today. She was not happy at all when Kentucky Congressman Hal Rogers poked her and said to her, kiss my ass, when she asked him to put on a face mask. This is the tweet that she posted. Uh, today, while heading to the House floor for votes, I respectfully asked my colleague, Representative Hal Rogers, to put on a mask while boarding the train. He then poked uh, my back, demanding I get on the train. When I asked him not to touch me, he responded, kiss my ass. Uh, this is the kind of disrespect we have been fighting for years and indicative of the larger issue we have with GOP members flaunting health and safety mandates designed to keep us and our staff safe. Representative Hal Rogers, when you are ready to grow up and apologize for your behavior, she, she wrote uh, in the tweet, you know where to find me. Well... It didn't take Sister Long uh, to get her apology. Uh, I was just about an hour ago. Uh, I was just on, um, I was just checking to see what the latest was. And uh, Hale Rogers uh, tweeted this uh, about 6.30. Let me pull this thing up. Um, here we go. Give me one second. Um, here we go. Uh, he tweeted... This afternoon, I met with Representative Beatty to personally apologize. My words were not acceptable, and I expressed my regret to her first and foremost. Well, you should, you arrogant son of a bitch. Uh, this is the kind of crap that we see uh, in Congress right now with many of these Republicans. Uh, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Bo Boebert, they don't give a damn about uh, wearing masks. But uh, you don't put your hands on a black woman, uh, Hal Rogers, Teresa, she should have checked him. Absolutely. I mean, look, the comfortability here, you know, is just a bit alarming. You know, it's it's the traditional privilege. It's the outlandish remarks. Um, I'm, I'm glad she did it, but I know she wanted to do more. So I am absolutely happy um, that she, she kept her composure. But part of it is, you know, it, it did have to be, the, the alarm had to be sounded on this guy um, because part of it is, you know, if one feels comfortable, then everyone else starts to follow suit. So good for Red Betty. You know, you, you know, you, you poke me. That's, that's asking me to smack the hell out of you, Demario. Man, I am, I'm enraged by that. As you know, I spent a lot of time this last year with Congresswoman Beatty and uh, with the Congressional Black Caucus. I cannot believe that, you know, I, I wish that um, she would have filed a police report because that is battery. When you touch someone else, that is a crime. And then when he said, kiss my ass, that is actually, I would say, assault. He was putting her in imminent uh, danger of, of being touched or harmed even further. You know, these white supremacists like that, they cannot feel comfortable, as Teresa just stated. They need police reports. If this happens to you out in the real world, people that are listening, file your police report and file a civil lawsuit against these folks. Let them know that they have no right to touch us and treat us as property. How dare him do that to not only a black woman, but the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, one of our leaders in this country. It enrages me to hear that. I did not know anything about that. And I certainly will be reaching out to Congresswoman Beatty and expressing my support for her and anything that I can do personally to help her with this situation. This is well, ridiculous. Well, of course, you, do, you can't know everything. That's why we got Rose Martin Unfiltered. See, that's the whole point of the show. Uh, Mustafa, what you dealing with? You do with a great it, job, my friend. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. What you dealing with, Mustafa, what you deal, you're dealing with some arrogant Republicans who are emboldened by Donald Trump, who want to flout masks, they want to flout mandates, they don't care. And you know what? They got to be chin checked. Oh, without a doubt. And you know, uh, to Representative Rogers, you know, at one time, you know, you had a, a person in your life by the name of Cynthia and, and Shirley, your former and current wife, and then you also have a daughter named Allison. So if someone did that to Allison, how would you feel? What kind of repercussions do you think that that individual would have needed to receive if they'd done something like that? So we understand the dynamics that are going on. They don't see us quite as full humans. They don't see us and they don't respect us, no matter what our titles are, no matter how many letters we have after our name. These folks continue to see us the same way that their grandparents and their great grandparents did. The difference is we are no longer silent and we will no longer allow you to punk us. Um, so we will utilize every tool that's in our arsenal to check you. video in just one moment.
time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. I support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own. A Black man <laughs> owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Like, wow. Rolling was amazing on that. Hey, Black, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?